out how to get the critical mind back in our society. A critical mind which makes it possible you know, to cut through all kind of myths uh, and say, well, that's nonsense or that's the past or how. It may be, it may be that um, it's events like this, it's, it's certain uh, political exchanges, to contradict what I said earlier, uh, that, it's that, that the critical mind can only now be produced in institutions other than those of traditional education. Because although I spent most of my life in um, uh, uh, universities and in traditional educational institutions, I have to say that among the changes of the last 20 years, which have been the most regressive, has been the remodeling of educational institutions as industries the remodeling of educational uh, institutions as market-oriented institutions. That's to say with internal profit, uh, um, fantasy sort of profits that they make. Re the key, one of the key errors, I think, of the last 20 years, it was quite different from deregulating markets, is that all social institutions have to be restructured as markets. In the... And, and that means an incredible hollowing out of ethos. I was lucky enough to go to a traditional institution in, in which that had not yet happened. A traditional grammar school in Britain followed by a traditional Oxford college. Not from a background where I could have, my family could afford that. But even if issues of access, which have gotten worse with the increasing inequality of, modern, of recent times, were resolved, what you would go to, all these institutions have been to some extent deformed. Not to say that there were no problems, there were all kinds of problems, they were, were, they were opaque, there were various difficulties of many, many kinds, one needn't have any nostalgic view of them. But the key element which is lost, and the key uh, is, is the idea of institutions with their own ethos and with having a non-market ethos. And that, I think, in education would include, as in a critical element, the inculcation of um, skeptical thinking, the inculcation of a disciplined sort of thinking in which the fact that you want something or hope for it is not by itself a reason for thinking that it will and can happen. Mm -hmm. that's and that's, a, that's, a, that, that's a, hard, a hard discipline which needs to be taught. But at the moment, I'm afraid, I'm not too confident that within the institutions where, that we have, which are organized, if not around status, then around market notions, that they will or can provide it. Can I say okay. something about um, the British press in mm. that respect? Sorry? Could you say something about the British press? <laughs> uh, what, which aspect? I mean, there are so many, there are, there's so many proliferating evils, as it were, connected with it. Well, I, but, I, you know, one can say something good about the British press, you know, in this respect, which is that, let me take an example, um, not so well known as the more recent scandals. There was a recent case of a, um, of a, of a serviceman who'd been damaged I th in, uh, in Afghanistan, I think. Rory might know about it, who was, went to prison for having a gun which he hadn't discharged, which he hadn't handed in, which he'd forgotten about. And I think that example, um, that case, probably if, that, if the press had not taken that up, so along with all the other things it does, intruding in people's lives, and they've used criminal techniques of phone hacking and all the rest of it. If that case hadn't been pursued by the press, probably he would have, might have stayed in jail. So I do think, you know, I do, th I do think that um, um, the, uh, with all its unruliness and its uh, anarchic tendencies and the actual crimes and invasions of privacy that the press has been involved in, and its collusive relations with elements in the police force and with enormous... Um, powerful press magnates. I do think actually that um, old-fashioned press freedom is still important. Um, I, yeah, I, I think the problem is that we have lost a sense of the real, mm. of the local, of the political. I think we exist in a world of extraordinary abstraction. I mean, that's true for our educational system. Yeah. It's true for our universities. It may sometimes even be true of the discussion on this panel, mm. right, that, that we are... Um, a collection of people with particular specializations who aren't actually engaged in a conversation. Yevgeny keeps saying, when are you going to challenge my theory on technology? And everybody else is talking about whatever else they want to be talking about, right? Understandably, right? Um, now, I'll challenge it. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
which is why I think the solution must slightly lie in getting off this kind of panel into a particular real situation. I mean, we pose as sort of moral and political philosophers in an extraordinary vacuum using a few little anecdotes. And the way in which my students were taught at Harvard was very, very similar. You know, we created a culture of academics who knew nothing, really, uh, attracting in idealistic young students and giving them theories of development, theories of intervention, theories of this, theories of that, and every student goes away with their takeaway, and we have to sit and listen respectfully. If we were really down in a particular place, dealing with problems that we had to justify, with this affordable housing scheme, with installing this broadband in this village, with working out the road network, a lot of these problems fall apart. The problem, basically, is that you can't have a civilized, educated elite when that elite uh, no longer connects in any way with the real, the local, or the political. Would you like to... Um <laughs> Would you like to join uh, bird life conservation? Because it's very local and on the ground. It's very ground up. And it has to work with people who live there because unless the people who live in a place can be convinced that there's something good for them in this, uh, no conservation effort will work. So you're engaged on, at the same time with uh, people who live in a locality whose nature is very localized uh, and with conserving habitat and conserving species. I, I think it's a great I, example. I invite yeah, yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, it's a great example. Mark. And the other yeah, reason yeah, I invite yeah. you is this. Of the money given to charities um, in North America, for an example, 97% goes to people things, things having to do with people. Hearts, kidneys, arts, whatever it may be, education, whatever. It's all about people. Of the remaining 3%, Half goes to pets, cats, dogs, parrots, and gerbils. That leaves one and a half percent for all the rest of nature, the nature upon which we depend. So get down and dirty with the nature people. Well, I, I think the, <laughs> You're my, all invited. My, um, can, I, can I just... Uh, <laughs> okay, yeah. Can I, I, I just want to reiterate what uh, Rory has said, actually. Uh, we need to rediscover, and it may be very unfashionable to say in a forum like this, but we need to rediscover how to think small. Uh, there is a tyranny of big ideas out there. Everyone wants to be a big thinker. I mean, look at the success of the TED conference. Everyone wants to think big, and preferably in 18 minutes, as if you could deliver a solution to every single problem of the world in a very short space of time using as abstract of a language as possible. Uh, it's a fetish. Everyone wants to be in the business of big ideas. Mm. No one wants to go and get dirty and get empirical and actually investigate how many of the technologies, for example, we talk about, have completely different logics. That's why I am opposed to using a term like Pax Technologica because it assumes that technology has a coherent logic mm. to it. There is no coherent logic to it. And you know what? Ordinary people know that. That's why they find most of us so ridiculous. On the other hand, we because don't. Because our <laughs> theories do not match their empirical experience with their cars, no, with their devices. No, they have a, no but I'm very serious. On the other hand, we don't, on the other hand, we don't find, want people with no ideas at all. You can have a technological fix right. to crime. I mean, One I mean, fix was, would be I, make it impossible, yeah. another fix yeah, okay, would be okay, okay. use technology to make sure that innocent people don't go to jail. Okay, the, you it, can it, do that it, with it, technology. It, 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 Let, it can I quote, it can, Maynard Keynes, who I admire very much, said, you know, there is a kind of danger in, there's a great danger in people running around with great ideas. Great ideas in the 20th century went with great casualties. And there's an, it's, it's very dangerous. But there's also a danger in saying, let's get back to practice. Because actually, practice very often consists of the bad ideas of a previous generation. But, but John, this is exactly, John, 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 this, I mean, is, Mania John, Kenya, John, this yeah. is exactly yeah. not what I'm saying, yeah. right? The That's point exactly is to try to put the ideas into practice. The point of the political sphere, which you're abandoning in many, many ways through this kind of conversation, is exactly discussing ideas and contesting ideas in the local context. But if you have, the, a, def the, but if the, you have a defect of, you see, one of the things is we're discussing the whole issue is if all human beings were adults. They're already adults. They're not. They have to go through families and, and schools. And so, although I'm very critical and, not, and rather skeptical of university uh, education as it now exists in many countries, we certainly can't write off schools. If people emerge from schools 
with uh, no coherent worldview, with um, no ability to think about ideas big or small, it doesn't matter in a sense what you try and do at the local ground level, it'll not have terribly good results. So I do agree with that we should look back at education, and particularly maybe schools, uh, and consider has a lot gone wrong or has it not gone wrong? Is it actually better than we think? What are the changes that have in fact taken place? Uh, why is, is it the case that people emerge with the capacity for critical thinking or not? 